Aerial Square 4 Engine Disassembly Part 2 So where we left yesterday I'd taken the front couple of gear off with my special puller and I was pondering how to take the rear one off so I had a little bit of a look at the owner's manual last night and um, that is the little oil seal or a very old hard crusty looking oil seal um, which should just pop off and hopefully underneath we'll have another thread and my nifty puller will fit and I'll be able to take off the other one and look at that, by magic the oil seal has come off hopefully I can get another one because that has seen better days I don't think that is sealing much oil and again we've got the little threaded coupling gear there which my special puller should fit Float on the cam crankshaft, so good. special tool. Might be another 30 years before I need that again hopefully. Here's got my parts tree. While we're talking about parts, in the other video I said that I pulled the, the head and the barrels off and I didn't really know what I was doing bit of a lie there, I didn't know what I was doing um, but I just didn't get around to making a video so these are the valves out of the square 4 um, and that ones don't look too bad I think they'll do another turn the exhaust ones have been leaking a bit which is a bit interesting but again they're in reasonable condition, I think they'll clean up ok uh, pistons also um, there's a little bit of marking on them I think a lot of that was where I was, I was getting the barrels off, which turned into a bit of a mission. Um, check my website if you want to know more about that. Overall, they're not in too bad, Nick. Um, it's been very little blow by anything past the ring, so the rings were doing their job. Um, cylinders look alright with the eye chromator. We'll need to measure them up just to make sure that they are still parallel and within spec, but I think they'll be okay. None of the rings were stuck. It's all in, all in pretty good, Nick. And again, I'm, I'm hoping that the bottom end is going to be okay. Right, what are we left with? We're left with enough oil to upset Greenpeace. That's the start. So we are almost in half. What have we got left? Looks like there's just some a few bolts left holding the um, crankcase halves together. The front ones hold the engine mounts. Um, so we've got two here in the middle. We've got one at the back. on the sun which um, will come out. We've got a, if you can quite see that from there, um, there's actually a sump plate on there 
and there's one or two, four more bolts underneath. So I might take that plate off, I'll drain the rest of the oil out of it, then we'll get these other bolts off. Let's see what we have left. I've now drained a small oil tanker's worth of waste oil out of the sump. I've undone the last handful of bolts holding the crankcase together. So, really, there's no reason why the crankcases shouldn't split now, and we'll see what we've got underneath. If there's anything left, let's give it a little tap and see what happens. Sounds good. The rear has started to come apart, the front hasn't. That means we've still got a bolt somewhere. No, everything is apart. Shaft. Free. We'll give the front crank a bit of a tap with my soft hammer. Yeah, it's coming apart now. Square four camshaft. Mm, that has had a rough life. Good exchange runs from Dragonfly, so I'm guessing this one is going to back to the UK. Ouch. So we're left with two engine cases. Look at that, it did come up right. Just put them down here for a moment.
the whole main purpose of pulling this engine down, hopefully you can see it, the vice isn't in the road, is that the square four, if it hasn't been maintained properly, or it's been left sitting for a long time like this motor has, or engine rather, the oil galleries can gunge up with, with carbon and old oil and stuff. So we need to take out these plugs on the crankshafts and drill out the oil galleries and make sure they are clear. Because what will happen if they're not is that uh, the day will come when you're having a nice ride in the sun, you wind open the throttle, the rear crank will seize and it will disappear out through the bottom of the crankcase and that will be the end of your engine and since these things are absolutely unobtainable now it's probably the end of your square four experience so we need to take out these plugs, we'll take out the cranks anyway take out these plugs and um, make sure that the all wells, all galleries are, are drilled out Right, this will come down to this. We've got the crankcases off now. Um, just a little bit of a tap. Done. And we just need... We'll just take one bearing cap off. That should be an indication of what they're all like. I hope. The oil on the sump was pretty clean and there was not a lot of sludge to be found in there, so I'm hoping that is a good sign. Removed number three conrod and it actually looks in really good condition. Um, there's a little bit of wear in there which you'd expect. There's no great scoring or gouges or anything that you would get. There's a little bit of a mark, but given that the, the bike has no um, oil food or anything on it, it's actually in pretty good condition. The crank journal as well, you can see that. Crank journal looks fine, there's no scoring on it. Very, very pleased. So all four pistons have now been removed from the crank, con rods rather. So a couple of things to do yet. Um, obviously you've got a mountain of, of washing up and cleaning to do. You probably can't see this on the film. But looking at the, the bearing journal, um, I can see it's stamped with 020, so it's a 20th hour undersized. So it's been, been down before and it's been, um, cranks have been ground. There are no marks at all on the, on the cranks, on the journal, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, providing they measure up okay when, the, when I take it to the motor guy, um, I'm expecting all I will need is a polish. As I said, the whole purpose of pulling down the bottom end is to undo that little screw there, and again hopefully you can see it, but I've got to run a drill through and clear out that oil gallery down there. Um, do that on all four journals, just to make sure those oil ways are free. So for the pistons and conrods, um, obviously the motor's been down before, they've been stamped. It's that cylinder one, it's got one stamp on it. And you won't be able to see this. Um, normally you'd put a, um, you'd put a corresponding mark on the camshaft side of the piston for what cylinder it came out of. This one's got an arrow on it. 
and also stamped on the top it's got 65.023 which I guess is millimetres um, I'll need to check with the, with the aerial manual I've got a funny feeling that it's going to be standard bore but um, hopefully it will be um, so they'll clean up like I said it looks like it's been um, sealing really well there's no blow by or anything in that a little bit of scuffing on the skirts but nothing that won't buff out Conrods, they're 60 years old, they're alloy, um, they probably should be replaced. Big expense to do these, but it's a big expense for the motor to blow up, just because I was, went cheap on not replacing Conrods. Right, next step's a lot of cleaning. So these are the crankcases pulled apart. Um, pretty good condition. I'm, I'm quite happy with them. There's not a lot of oil and gunge in the bottom. Um, see the oil pick up there. It's got a little sump plug there which all the, all the gunge has gone into. It's a little bit there but um, given it's a 60 year old motorbike it's in pretty good condition. 